Why has it taken this long for companies like Microsoft to realize video game subscription services are going to be the future of their entire industry? Let's examine three key things that have changed over the last decade that have quite literally changed the game. First, it was broadband speeds and hard drive capacities. A modern game can take up storage space of more than 100 gigabytes. For context, an entire movie streaming in Ultra HD 4K on, say, Disney Plus might be between 10 and 20 gigabytes. Before now, file sizes like that were just too cumbersome to download for the mass market to want to do so, and it meant box copies remained a popular alternative. But in developed markets with gigabit fiber optic connections and unlimited download quotas, it's just not a roadblock anymore. Some console games can be played as they're installing because the device simply downloads the beginning of the game first. Game streaming further negates the problem, as services like Xbox Cloud Gaming, PlayStation Now, Nvidia's GeForce Now, they just stream the game to you in real time as you play, no download in advance required. The second thing that's changed is mobile in-app payments, and bear with me here. When Apple and Google began letting companies give away their apps for free and monetize them with in-app upgrades and features, they slowly but comprehensively redesigned how consumers approach sampling and committing. We have entirely become used to being drawn into compelling screenshots or descriptions and downloading an app or a game or a service and enjoying it for free for a while. Games account for the majority of spending on mobile app stores, and most of that is within games that were free to try in the first place. With the broadband speed and storage issues removed, it makes sense for this try-don't-buy model to absorb console and PC gaming as well. The third change is, of course, a wholesale shift in consumer sentiment towards subscription in general. The model just works, giving me access to everything, and I'll pay you every month to get off my back. Investors love it too, as it's much easier to forecast growth and less risky than relying on a single big title every year to bring in all the money. And when you add in the back catalogue games and games from older consoles and PC generations, it's the icing on the cake for consumers as far as value is concerned. Which brings us to today and why companies like Microsoft are buying up studios like ZeniMax, Bethesda, Activision. Yes, it's for the Call of Duties and Skyrims to drive new subscriptions, but it's also for vast back catalogues of older games to pad out subscription catalogues with options to keep people paying and playing. For Microsoft in particular, it's also a way to bolster its Azure cloud architecture, which powers the Xbox gaming service. With hindsight, it was inevitable the subscription model would take over in video games, but there are some unanswered questions to look out for. For instance, Sony's strategy has always been to stick to releasing great games that exclusively require its consoles as a way of attracting users. Could Sony keep people buying PlayStations if they knew they could access an Xbox streaming catalog or vice versa? Also, many major games come in two, three or more expanded or ultimate editions. So as part of the game subscription, you get the basic title, but if you want all those extra levels or costumes or weapons, you need to pay a little extra to the developer to unlock them. This does already happen, of course, but mobile gaming has shown us that's a door that could be opened even wider. Where do you stand on game subscriptions? Do you prefer to buy outright still? Let me know on social media. For Quick Take in London, I'm Nate Langson, and I've been technically gaming. <laughs>